Okay, so what I'm going to do now is inside of our source directory, I'm going to create a new subdirectory, and we'll just call that models. And we're going to use this directory to store a model for our note object. So let's go ahead and create a new file. It's going to be a new TypeScript file, and we're just going to call it note.model.ts. And it's just going to contain a simple interface export. So we'll go ahead and export interface note. And now we can define the different properties that any note in our app will have. So let's keep it simple. We'll have a title, which will be a string. We'll have some content, which will hold the note content, which will be a string. Then we'll have a date. So we'll allow the user to select a date. And then I'm going to have this property create date, which will be a number. And we'll take a look at how we're going to use this a little bit later, but we're essentially going to use it to be um, a way to get a sort of unique identifier for any note that gets created. And it's going to be represented as a number because when we create a new date, we are going to essentially represent that in milliseconds since, I believe, January 1st, 1970. So we'll take a look at how that's used in a little while. Okay, so what I want to do now is to implement Ionic storage. So let's head back into our providers directory and then into our note service. So if you recall previously, we imported storage from Ionic storage, but we haven't implemented it yet. So previously, we were simply pushing a new object onto this notes array anytime we were saving it. Using this method, we don't really get any data persistence. So as soon as we get a new instance of our note service, we get an empty array um, of, of our notes, and so that essentially has the effect of deleting any of the notes that we've stored there anytime our application restarts. So we're going to use Ionic Storage to do some basic data persistence now. And we're lucky in that with Ionic Storage, it's actually pretty easy to get data persistence set up. So let's take a look. Um, the first thing that I'd like to do is to remove these objects that we've used as sort of placeholders for our note object. And now we can actually uh, bring in the new note interface that we had defined. Um, and so we'll go ahead and import that from our models directory. So now our notes property will just be a collection or a, an array of this note object, if you will. And likewise, when we save a note here, we can also make it of type note. Okay, so this shouldn't really change the functionality yet. We just have this new object type, which has um, several different properties on it. So anytime we save a note, what I'm going to do is, first thing that I'm going to do is simply set that create date that we talked about just a moment ago as a new date dot now. Returning a number, which as I mentioned will basically just be the number of milliseconds since January 1st, 1970 um, UTC. And so we should get a, a, a new number, at least for our purposes, anytime we create a new note here. If we wanted to scale our app and perhaps make this a little bit more robust, then we might find a different way to get a unique identifier here. But as I mentioned, this should serve our purposes. So we're still going to push a note onto our array. Um, but now what we'll do is we'll say this.storage, and we need to actually bring in um, or inject uh, a storage service, if you will, into our constructor of type storage. Again, this is coming from Ionic storage. And so this.storage has some methods on it, including a set method. And so, as you can see from the little IntelliSense I got there, this is going to basically set a value for a given key. So we're going to have a sort of like dictionary type structure where we have key value pairs and that we can set and access with storage. So we'll make a key notes. And we can set any other sort of object here. So let's just go ahead and set our notes array to that notes key. Okay, so now how are we going to get all notes? Well, let's look at how we can get notes from storage. So if, uh, for instance, if our app were to refresh and we were to get this.notes, then we would just simply get an empty array if uh, nothing had yet been pushed onto that array. So what we'll do instead here is we'll return and then we'll use this.storage and now we'll use a method get that we have here and you can see that this is just to get the value associated with a given key so we have a sort of getter and a setter method here and now we just pass it that key and this is going to return a promise so we can call then on it to pass it a callback function to do something 
when this promise gets resolved. So let's just call that notes. And what we want to do here is, uh, first of all, we want to handle the initial case when notes is null. So let's just do it this way. We're going to set this.notes equal to notes, which should get returned from our callback function. Um, but when that's null, then we are going to set it to empty array, otherwise return us notes. So we have a sort of ternary operator here where we want to check whether or not notes that we're getting back from local storage is null. If that's the case, then return an empty array. Otherwise return the notes that we should get back from local storage. And so we set that to this.notes that is on our class here. And then what we can do is once again simply return a copy of them here. So we use a spread operator inside of um, square brackets here to return um, a copy of this as an array. So as we saw previously, you could also um, just return this.notes.slice as well to return a copy. So that part, yeah, I'll just leave up to you. Okay, cool. So now you can see that that's actually super easy to simply get some data persistence set up using Ionic Storage. And Ionic Storage is going to be handling all of the, you know, the storage aspect of keeping this data um, persisted in the background. And so it will be using things like local storage or SQLite or WebSQL, things like that, um, to provide us with that data persistence. Also, if you missed it in the previous video, you will want to double check your app.module TypeScript file in the app directory and ensure that you've brought, uh, ensure that you've imported Ionic Storage module from Ionic Storage and um, included it among your imports and called for root on it here. Okay, so while we're in here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and make another import for some forms. So we can import forms module as well as reactive forms module from angular slash forms. Okay, um, and we're gonna use the forms module and the reactive forms module to improve the form that we have currently um, in use in our app. So we're gonna come down here and in our imports array, we need to actually make sure that we bring those in. So forms module and reactive forms module. If you don't import these modules, then you'll get some kind of strange errors when we update our forms. Okay, so that should take care of our imports for the time being. Now I'd like to head back to our add note page. So you can F12 there if you're using Visual Studio Code. And if you haven't removed the uh, scaffolded code here in the placeholder code, we can remove that as well.